Good day everyone! I'm Mom Shiroxan and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we will have a special episode in campus journalism, broadcasting, which will be discussed by a winning coach in the person of Dr. Eileen Rabago Mora. Great day everyone! Welcome to another virtual learning session with Ma'am Roxanne and I will be with you today as your guide in this specific learning episode. I am your teacher Eileen and I will help you uncover things about broadcast media including its overview on script writing and production. So specifically after having the session, you are all expected to define broadcasting, distinguish radio and television broadcast, and point out the standards of broadcasting. And of course, this will help you come up with a performance on radio or a TV broadcast. So, grab your pen and paper as you take down the important concepts that you are going to encounter along the way. By the way, journalism in a broad sense is the collection, preparation, and distribution of news and related commentary and feature materials through print and electronic media such as newspaper, magazines, books, blogs, webcasts, podcasts, social networking, and social media sites, and email as well as through radio, motion pictures, and television. And I guess that already set your mood on our today's topic. We are going to start with how broadcasting is being defined from various contexts and resources. From its root word broadcast, Merriam Webster Dictionary defined it as to send out or transmit something such as program by means of radio or television or by streaming over the internet. While in the context of a study, Humber College Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning described the term broadcast media as something that covers a wide range of different communication methods that includes television, radio, podcast, blogs, advertising, websites, online streaming, and digital journalism. In one of their courses, they emphasize that broadcast media provides valuable information that can inform and educate and includes public service announcements, daily news, weather forecasts, interviews, and documentaries. Also, broadcast media is also recreational and includes reality television, situation, and sketch comedies, movies, sports, and advertising. But, as I mentioned a while back, we are going to focus on how it is being used on campus journalism. And speaking of broadcast media, don't you know that Philippines is perhaps the only Asian country that has the highest number of broadcasting stations whose operations come under the supervision of a broadcast media council? That's from Ernesto Sanko on his published article entitled Broadcasting and the Philippines Involvement in Development. So, we are going to focus on radio broadcasting and TV broadcasting as I mentioned earlier. Specifically, we are going to take the context of how this medium promote journalism in schools and universities presented into different categories. So let's try to enumerate and discuss some of the significant differences as well as pointing out some details on script writing and production per se. Television and radio broadcasting involve the production and performance of news and entertainment programs. Technological developments relating to broadcasting have been progressing very rapidly that is the working system and devices in the broadcasting system contained in radio stations and television stations 
So specifically, radio broadcasting is a general approach to which sound is transmitted to a bigger audience, be it transmitted through radio or over the internet. The aired material determines its category and not its medium. It is defined as transmission of audio, sometimes with related metadata, by radio waves intended to reach a wide audience. On a standard radio broadcasting procedure, the people involved are the following. We have the director, the scriptwriter, the technical director who can also be the technical specialist, the talents referring to the anchor, co-anchor, news presenters, and the infomercial specialist. While TV broadcasting refers to a telecommunications network for distribution of television program content, where a central operation provides programming to many television stations or pay television providers. This includes your anchor or anchors, reporters, producers who can also be the director or the floor director, video graphics editor, video researcher, and the production assistant, and of course, the video journalist or the cameraman. As we are going to understand the important concepts of broadcast media, let's focus on its three major elements, which are the content, the human voice, and the technical application. First of which is the content which serves as the core of the broadcast piece, while human voice refers to the heart and soul of the broadcast. And lastly, the technical application that gives dynamics to the actual broadcast. This time, let's discuss them one by one. Part of the content is your script. The script refers to the written material which indicates verbal and non-verbal action that has to go in the program. It tells us what to do and what to say, when and how. We need it to ensure the accuracy of information, ensure the continuity of the program, and maximize airtime since we only have limited time allotment to follow. It serves as a Bible for both the talents and the technical specialist or the whole production staff. Specifically, when we are writing our news for an on-air segment, we have to remember that broadcast news writing uses a different structure than print journalism. News must be direct to the point, simple and short as possible, as we aim to write for the ear. That's why we have to consider the element of immediacy meaning we have to talk in present tense that means avoiding too complicated words or words that implies different meaning when heard abbreviations must be properly presented as well as the attributions and quotations be cautious also in the use of the pronouns these concepts will lead us to the four C's of our news stories. That's correctness, clarity, conciseness, and color. We see correctness when we are dealing about accuracy. While clarity means being easily understood, conciseness would mean brevity or shortness, while color means interesting. Sample news content may include international news, national news, local news, entertainment news, and sports news. This applies to both TV and radio broadcasting. Also, an infomercial or devcom may be included to break the monotony of news presentation. 
its main purpose is to give information while entertaining the listeners of the viewers. This time, let's try to look into some specific features of a TV script and a radio script. First is to look into a TV script. An audiovisual script for TV broadcasting includes two components which are the visual and oral. We say visual because it will tell us what we will see on the actual prod like photographs, artworks, graphics, text, and labels, while oral determines what we need to hear. This includes human voice, the music, and the sound effects like the signature music bed, the transition sounds, and others that will establish the setting and the atmosphere for the viewers. As a script writer on a TV broad, we must view video before writing the story because the words must match the video since it is easier to change or adjust the words than the video. Also, we must identify people shown in stories quickly as we don't want to leave our viewers guessing. Let the picture tell the story. Use words to clarify items that are not obvious from the video. And for the basics of a radio script, Radio stories should not be longer than 45 seconds. Usually, three or four sentences will do. While the newspaper reporter might take 700 words to tell the story, you'll often have no more than 75 to 80 words on a news broadcast. Also, it should be conversational in nature. Let us keep our story simple. Use simple sentences with active verbs to make our broadcast effective. Other things to consider in the content of our script is the bumper. This refers to some lines between the news and commercial breaks. Its function is to tell the listeners that there will be some more news coming up. One example of bumper is, we will be back with more news after these reminders. Have you heard one like that before? We also have the teaser, which is used to stimulate curiosity so that the listeners will stay tuned in hearing what it's all about. Aside from the bumper and teaser, we also have the billboard that is usually heard after the news. It reminds what product sponsors the said news. Like we heard them say, this news is brought to you by Dunkin' Donut, ang pasalubong ng bayan. So, that's all for the content. The next element on the list is the human voice which I described a while back as the heart and soul of the broadcast. Part of this is a broadcast delivery that encompasses the texture, pacing, and the impact of the human voice. Let us consider the basics, like the projection. It deals about vocal energy. We also have the voice inflection that focuses on the appropriate rise and fall in voice. We also have to consider pausing that refers to stopping at appropriate times to separate ideas and allow the audience and give them time to absorb thoughts. And the vocal stressing that gives emphasis on the appropriate words in each sentence to communicate the desired meaning. Along with this is the mood that refers to the expression of happy or sad feelings through the voice. We also have the texture that refers to the quality of voice. Stress that makes some words more important than the others. And lastly, the pacing that indicates whether words are being said in various speed. And finally, we have the third element, which is the technical application. It is characterized 
through the bed, which refers to the production element, usually instrumental music or sound effect played in the background. And some of the basic reminders on the technical side of our production are the following. We have the queuing of gadgets and broadcast paraphernalia, the sound effects, proper handling of equipment and microphones, and our timing and precision. In radio broadcasts, we use the following for music cues. These are fade in, where music starts to play. We also have the fade up, where music increases in volume. Fade under means music decreases in volume, while fade out means music gradually decreases till it's cutting. Another cues are Establish that means broadcast content being played is already in steady level. We also have the cross fade with which means that the first music fades as the second music increases. That air means silence for 3 seconds. Other terms are ad-lib which means speech that has not been scripted or rehearsed and the time check that means the live announcement of the exact clock time. All these instructions for the technical specialist must be encoded in all capital letters and underlined. At this juncture, let me show you an example of a radio broadcasting script with some of its basic parts. I have chosen this since its production seems to be simpler and easier. So as you can see, we have here the slug line that composes the program title. The TRT refers to the runtime that means this script is airball for 5 minute broadcast. Of course, we have to include the name of the encore, the air date, and the production mode. Production mode determines whether it is live or canned. Of course, the first thing that we have to see on a script is a music cue. The music cue determines whether the theme music fade in, establish, then fade under 4. Followed by the first line to be given by the encore. SFX means the sound effect. That means we are going to hear for a laser bullet. Now, on our script, we have to include our station ID, the frequency, and of course, the program title. So, if you are going to notice for the opening billboard of every radio broadcast, we include the introduction, the station ID. For station ID, we use DZ for Metro Manila, DW for Luzon, DY for Visayas, and DX for Mindanao. And for frequency, AM is for kilohertz, while FM is for megahertz. And kilohertz runs from 535 to 1605. Of course, we have to include the time check and the anchor's opening spiel. So, here is an example of a time check, the opening spiel, and the headline of the news that we are going to present for the day. Now, on a standard radio production, we use this composition for a 5-minute broadcast. We start with the OBB or the introduction until the presentation of headlines. You're given 1 minute to do that. Next is the presentation of the first two news that you are going to give. You are given 40 seconds per news that runs 1 minute and 20 seconds. After which, to break the monotony, you can give the infomercial. And then followed by the two other news that you wanted to include on your news. And the last remaining minutes is the closing billboard that will include the name or presentation of the names of the anchors and the title of your broadcast. Now, these are the materials that you usually use when conducting a radio broadcast production. So, of course, we have the microphone, we have the laptop installed with a mixer for your sound effects and music beds. We also have the printer for printing of your scripts, 
and other necessary instruments that can be of help in your overall production. For a TV broadcast production, it's quite complicated because you need to have proper lighting on your video production as well as green screen setup and a computer installed with different video editing applications. With all the basics of broadcast media that you have learned today or dear students, I do hope that you have clearly set your minds on how it works as you were able to grasp the standards of script writing and production through its elements, which are the content, human voice, and technical application. And let me leave you this quote from Roy T. Bennett as he said, Life is about accepting the challenges along the way, choosing to keep moving forward, and savoring the journey. Thank you for sharing your time with me and good luck on your journey on your actual production. Till next time, bye! Thank you so much, Dr. Eileen Mora, for sharing your expertise in broadcasting. You can follow Dr. Eileen Mora in her YouTube channel.